In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add this reactive search and filter functionality into your application using Svelte. We're gonna be taking advantage of Svelte stores to accomplish this, and we'll be able to search and filter based on a number of different properties within our data, such as the title, description, brand, and categories. If you're using TypeScript, we'll be covering type safety at the end of the video. And if you'd like to follow along, there will be a stack blitz linked in the description below that you can spin up in just a few seconds. If you get value out of this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel out a lot. And enough of me running my mouth, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so this is where we're starting off today. We just have a very basic app with some data here that I've gotten from the Dummy JSON API, one of my favorite Dummy JSON APIs to use. And we're getting some products here. And as you can see, I'm just rendering them on the page for the time being so you can see the structure of them. And before we can begin implementing a search functionality or slash filtering functionality to these products, we actually determine what we want to search by. So what I don't want is I don't want the user to type in 549 here in the search bar and then have it show this product here because the price is 549. So there's certain fields that I do want to search by and those are going to be the title, description, the brand, and the category. So that'll be a decision that you'll have to make within your application to determine what all things you want to search by. Maybe you just want to search by one. That's perfectly fine. That makes things really easy. But since we want to search by all of these, what we have to do is create a new array with the same objects here, except we're going to add a new property to them called search terms. And basically we're just going to smash the title, description, brand, and category all into that one property so we can use that to search by. And this will make more sense here in just a second. So let's go ahead and do that first. So inside of our code here, you can see that we're just getting the products here as you would from any, any other Svelte application and we're returning them back to the page. You can see that they're accessed through data here. So data.products is what we're rendering on the page. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna define a new array of products with that search terms property added to each of the objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say const search products equals data.products.map. I'm gonna take in product. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dot, dot, dot product Right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm returning all of the current properties that are on product. I want to keep those, right? And I'm going to add another one called search terms. And this is going to be, it's going to look really silly, but I promise you this is a, a, a fine way to do this. We're going to say product.title. We're going to say product.description, product.brand, and product.category. And I promise this will make sense in just a few minutes, but really... All we want to do is we're going to have all the things that we can search by on this one property. So we can just search and then just check this one property to see if there's a match. If there is, then we can return that product. If there's not, then obviously we know to filter it out. Okay. That's why we're doing this like this. There's a million different ways you could do this. This is just one of the ways that I found to be pretty simple to visualize. So now that we have this search products data here, we actually need to implement the search functionality and we're gonna be using a store for this. And we're actually gonna be creating a function that will allow us to create a search store, is what we're gonna call it, and then pass in data so that we can create multiple different search stores across our application with different data sets and they'll all function and they all should work the same way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my lib directory here and I'm gonna create a new directory called stores and then I'm gonna create one called search.ts. And again, the store itself isn't actually being created here. We're just creating a function that creates a store and then we're gonna create that store on our page.svelte. So we're gonna say export const create search store. It's gonna take in data. And if you're using TypeScript, at the end of the video, I'm gonna walk through how to make this type saved and add type hints and all that. But just for the time being, we're just gonna kind of roll through this. So the viewers who aren't using TypeScript are still able to follow along without getting too confused here, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say const subscribe, set an update, and we're gonna destructure these from writable, which is comes from Svelte slash store, right? So we're creating a new store here. We're defining a store. And this is gonna be an object. And the first thing that we're gonna have in this object is data. And that's going to be equal to data. So data like this is the same as doing data, data. And I'll just do that, I guess, to make it a little bit more obvious here. And then we're going to add another property called filtered. And the value of this by default is also going to be data. And then we're going to have a property called search, which is going to be an empty string by default because nothing is being searched by default. We have to wait for the user to actually search for something before we update this. Okay. And then all we're going to do is we're going to return subscribe, set and update. So now back on our page.svelte, what we can do is we can actually import that and we can say const search store equals create search store. 
which we need to import from lib slash storage slash search. And remember that takes in data. So we're just going to pass in the data that we want to search. And that's going to be the search products array that we just created here. So now we have a store. So now instead of doing json.stringify data.products, we can do dollar sign search store dot data, for example. And remember that's this data here, which is the same thing as what we passed into it. So now if we come into our application here, we can see that we now have search terms and we see all these search terms, they look pretty silly. So we're now using the stores data as our data source here. And what we'll do is we'll actually change this to filtered because by default, remember filtered is going to be the same as data. And then when we search for something, filtered is going to be updated. We haven't implemented that functionality yet, but when we actually search for something, filtered is going to be updated with that filtered data. So the data that matches our search. So we want to display this here. So now let's go ahead and get to the point where we actually implement the search functionality. So what we need to do is we need to go back into our search.ts file, and we're going to create a new function called search handler. And you guessed it, this is what's responsible for handling the search. It's going to take in a store, which is going to be whatever store we're currently working with at that point in time. And what we're going to do first is we're going to define a search term, right? So we're going to get the search term and that's going to be pulled from the store that we passed in store dot search dot two lowercase or an empty string. And the reason that we're converting this to a lowercase is so that we don't have to deal with any case sensitivity issues when searching for products. So if we didn't do that and we were to search for iPhone nine, if we typed it in like this, it wouldn't find it because it's expecting us to do I capital P lowercase H O N. So that just avoids that altogether for us. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to filter the data. So we're going to set store dot filter, which remember is the store that we pass in here. Again, in this case, it's going to be modeled the same way as this. So we can see that store dot filtered is currently set to data. However, we're going to reassign that. So we're going to say store dot filtered equals store dot data dot filter. So we're going to filter the data here and then we're going to get an item, which can be each one of the items within that array. So remember in this case, whoops, let me make this an arrow. In this case, item is going to be one of these objects and with filter, we either return true or false, right? So if it's true, the item gets added to the filtered array. If it's false, it gets filtered out. So it's not going to be there. So what we can do is you can just say return item dot search terms. So remember item search terms here are these, this jumbled mess we passed in here dot two lowercase again, avoiding that case sensitivity concern dot includes search term. So again, what we're doing here is we're setting store dot filtered to a filtered version of the store dot data array which is our original data set. We're only going to return the items. We're only going to have the items here where the search terms include our search term. I know that might be a little bit confusing, but our search term is what we're typing into the search box. Search terms is the terms that we set within the map here. So what we want to do now is we want to actually subscribe to that store so we can come back into our page.svelte and we could say const unsubscribe because the sub subscribe method of a store returns unsubscribe. And then we can say search store dot subscribe, and then we'll say model. And then we'll call search handler, which we need to import with model. So what subscribe is going to do is actually going to watch for changes in the data of our search store, right? And then what's going to happen is when that data changes, it's going to call this function here. And model in this case, if we hover over it, you can see that it's our, literally our store model. So we have data filtered in search. So this is the data of our store. We're going to pass, we're going to call search handler and pass in the store's data, right? So then we have, we're going to run this function here, which is going to get the store's data. It's going to rip out the search term from our store, which is here. And then it's going to update the store dot filtered with the filtered data. And since we subscribe to this store, we actually need to unsubscribe. So what we can do is we can say on destroy, which is going to come from Svelte. And we're going to say unsubscribe. So when this page component is destroyed, we will unsubscribe from the store. So we don't have a bunch of 
subscriptions and memory leaks and whatever other bad things can happen from having too many subscriptions open at the same time. So now you may be wondering, okay, cool. So when our store, when a change in our store's data is detected, this is going to run, which will then filter out our data. But how do we actually even initiate a change to that store? Well, what we can do is we can actually bind the value of input here of our search input, set that equal to search store with a dollar sign in front of it, right? Dot search. So search store dot search is going to be set to whatever the value of this input is. As we change it, it is going to update, which is going to call this function here that we just walked through. Okay. So now let's just see this in action by going back to our application. And if we type in something like laptops, you can already see the data starting to change as we type. So now I'm just getting laptops here. So all of these category of laptops. Now, if I search for, let's just try to search for like an ID, like 17. We're not going to get anything, right? Cause we're only searching by those search terms. So if I search for iPhone, I'm only going to get the iPhones and so on and so forth. Okay. And I already have some, uh, preset style set up that we can use in order to, um, make this look a bit better. So let me just add those here. So let's go down here and remove this pre-statement. And then I can also remove this because I already have that in the CSS and we'll set up a product grid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say each search store dot filtered as product. I'm going to set up another div with a class of product H2 with the title, a P tag with the product dot description, another P tag with badge. That's going to be the product dot category. And then one more for the product dot brand. This looks really ugly, but uh, at least it lets you visualize it a bit better here. So let's go look at our application now. And we can see that we now have a bunch of these little cards here with our products. And as we search, if I search for MacBook, we just get the MacBook. And you can see that if I just type Mac, we're now having MacBook Pro, Elbow Macaroni, uh, 400 grams of Elbow Macaroni, if you're interested in that. And then we're also getting this plant hanger for home. And that, and the reason we're getting this is because Mac Cream is in the description, right? So we're still gonna pick that up. So that's how you can add a basic search filter to your data in your Svelte application. If you're using TypeScript, stick around because we're about to go through the type safety piece of this. So let's go ahead and get into that now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to add proper type safety to this is to define the model of our search store. So I'm going to set up an interface here and it's going to be called search store model. It's going to be a generic that extends record because it's an object, right? With a property key and any. And it's going to have those three things. It's going to have data, which is going to be a type of T, an array of T. It's going to have filtered, which is also going to be an array of T. And then search, which is going to be a string. And we're just modeling this here, right? And then for the create search store, this is also going to be a generic. And we'll say T extends record, the same thing again, property key, any, and then data is actually going to be of type an array of T. And then for this writable, this is also, this is also a generic. So we can say search store model T like that. And then for our search handler, it's going to look very familiar. T extends record property key, any, and then store is actually going to be of type uh, search store model T. And now we should be good to go. Now, if we come back to our page.svelte, as it stands right now, I actually don't have these products types. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a type called product. And I'm just going to include a few of the types. I'm going to do the title, description, brand, uh, which is also a string. This is also a string. And then we also have category, which is a string. And we also, of course, have search terms, which is also a string. So I know there's a lot more to this, but just as a demonstration, I'm sure that if you're working with a database object like Prisma, you already have the types properly defined. I just want to show you how to use those. So now that we have product typed here, what we can do is we can set the search products to an array of product. And then obviously within this map here, we're going to have this single product is going to be a single product. So now search products, which is being passed into this create search store is of type an array of products, right? And we can see here that we're now having product be passed here in this generic. So now if we come down here and we just say search store dot data, remember this is an array. So we need to access one of those array items. 
we now have type hints here. So we can do brand, category, description, search terms, and title. We also have access to the search store as well because of the fact that we added that model. So we could say search store dot, and we're now gonna see that we have data filtered in search. So the same things would apply across the different parts of your application. So now if we come down here and I open up another one, I can say product dot, and then I'll have those type hints there as well. So that's how you can actually make this type safe as well. And that's gonna conclude today's video on adding a search slash filter functionality into your application with Svelte. It's pretty simple, but I think it covers some interesting cases. You know, there's a lot of times you get an object and you're not sure how you should implement search for it. So there's just one way that I've shown you today that you can do it. Of course, your mind can go wild and you can think of any different way that you would wanna filter that data. But of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. If you got value out of this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel. And if nothing else, I will see you all in the next video.